Hello everyone, it's Barry Galvin here. Thank you so much for watching this very hopefully quick video today. But my intention today is to really show you a study that I've done a number of times over the years as a Christian, as a Bible teacher. Um, and I say Bible teacher with all humbleness, you know, I, I, I teach the Bible as best I can the way the Lord gives me it, um, gives me what he wants me to teach. And my simple statement of faith uh, is that I believe 100% what's written in the inspired and preserved word of God, the authorised version, King James Holy Bible, rightly divided. We must make sure that we rightly divide the scriptures. That's a command, actually, in, in the scriptures. Study to show thyself approved, rightly dividing the word of truth. Um, and that's what I believe. So I try my best to, to, uh, to, to, to teach it as best I can with the Lord's help, of course. It's all him. It's, it's all him that does it. But over the years, I've done a timeline study where I just draw a very basic timeline. I illustrate... As, as much as I can, the Bible, um, depending on what it is we're looking at. So if we're looking at where the books of the Bible fit in, I'll use the same default timeline. If we're looking at end times, I'll use the same default timeline. So it's a default timeline that I've used for all sorts of different uh, uh, subjects and topics that I've discussed in various Bible studies and sermons that I've preached. Um, and I just want to share one of them today, a very simple illustration of where we are at the moment in January 2021. Where are we at the moment um, in relation to God's uh, next prophetic event in his calendar, which is the rapture of the church, the body of Christ, the believers, the Christians, the saved Christians, not just people that use the term Christian as a label, but the saved person, a saved, a genuinely saved person, generally somebody who has believed on the Lord Jesus Christ as their saviour, that has accepted his free gift of salvation, that's trusting him alone to get them into heaven. That's what I mean by a saved person. But anyway, I'll switch camera angles now. We'll look at the whiteboard and we'll take a look at the timeline. Okay, so let's get into it then. So this is the timeline. Let's say that this here is like the beginning of time. Let's put down just year zero there. Um, Genesis, that would be like the book of Genesis and so on there. And let's put the cross in. Let's say the cross is about there. Christ came and was uh, crucified on the cross. Let's now put uh, the rapture of the church here. And we put it like arrows. And then let's put the start of the millennial kingdom there, let's say. Uh, and then we'll have that for the moment. So this is a very basic timeline chart at the moment, just to see where we are um, in this present time in 2020, coming into 2021. So we had the cross of Calvary. When Christ came to the earth, he was born 2,000 or so years ago, and then he was crucified on the cross. So what we have between this year here, or year zero, if you like, um, from when the book of Genesis started, in the beginning God create, created the heaven and the earth and so on, the earth is about form and void. Let's say that that's here. So what we have is we have here a 4,000 year, 4,000 years, and then we have from the cross to where we are now is about is 2,000 years. Okay, so what we've got there in total is 6,000 years. And we know in scripture that this is representing a day, six days really. Uh, we had six days of creation, then he rested on the seventh day. So if a day is as a thousand years in, in the eyes of the Lord and so on. So we're looking at from when man and woman were first on the earth, back in the year zero, so to speak, to the cross, that was 4,000 years. And then from the cross to where we are now in 2020, coming into 2021, is, is 2,000 years. So we've got 6,000 years. And... When you look at the uh, Genesis chapter 1 and you see the recreation going on there, you see that God rested on the seventh day. And we know that God didn't have to rest. He doesn't have to rest if, you know, if he doesn't want to. Um, but it's, it's all a type of what, is, you know, what the future holds and things like that. So when he rested on the seventh, that's then the 7,000th year is the equivalent of rest. So what we see is we see the 1,000th year millennial reign over here when Christ comes back at the second coming. So let's put that, let's say there. Let's say that's the second coming of Christ. We have the thousand years then when Christ is going to reign on this earth 
as King of Kings and Lord of Lords. He's going to sit on the, the throne of David and he's going to rule for a thousand years. So that then becomes, obviously the thousand, that then becomes the seven, seven thousand years, the, 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 the thousand years of rest, really, on this earth. So we have the six thousand and the one is the thousand. But before that happens, we have this gap here in between. And this is actually a seven year gap but it's split into two, three and a half years, but it's totaling seven years in total. And this is known as, we call it the tribulation, the great tribulation, it's, it's like the last three and a half, but we call it the tribulation, but it's an official name, a biblical name is Jacob's Trouble. Jacob's Trouble. And as the name implies, it's dealing with the nation of Israel. So what we have here, if I just change over these. What we have here is we have, that we're in at the moment, we're in the church age at the moment. The church age. And then when we get over to here, that's no longer the church age because when we get to this point here, this is the rapture of the church. So this is a rapture of all the Christians that are caught up in the clouds with the Lord. So when the Lord comes back from heaven, he doesn't set foot on the earth at that time there. He meets us in the clouds, so the dead in Christ shall rise first, and, and we which are alive will be caught up with them in the clouds. So the Christians are taken up here in the rapture, and the ones that have died in Christ, they kind of their spirits come down, if you like, they're joined into their glorified body, and, and there we are with the Lord. So let me just move that for a moment. I'm going to put that to symbolise it's up in, in kind of heaven here or whatever. Okay, so that's where God comes down, Christ comes down, he meets us in the air. So we have the church age, then we have the rapture of the church, and then we get to here then, which is the tribulation period, or Jacob's trouble, where God now, uh, again, once again, deals with the nation of Israel. Primarily, he's dealing with the nation of Israel there. Um, all the other Gentile nations around it are really caught up in what's going on, but basically it's all about the nation of Israel. So when Christ first came, to the earth, let's say that he was born here, let's say, and he died at what, roughly 33 years of age. So he was born there, let's say, and what we had here was that when Christ was born and when he started uh, preaching, and this, when he was 30, started preaching around here, let's say, he was preaching the, um, the gospel of the kingdom. So he came to, specifically, he came to Israel there. He came to his own. He came to Israel. And he was dealing with Israel at that point. That's who he promised to come to. And he was dealing with Israel. So every, everything, every time he was talking to them about what's happening, what they should do, and things like that, he was addressing them really directly, the Israel nation. But at that time, there were many Gentiles around, of course, Gentile nations, and, uh, Romans that were around, and... and uh, 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 Samaritan people and all, all that type of stuff, you know, people that weren't Jews, basically. And they were still coming to the Messiah, coming to Christ, because it really, when you read the Gospels, it seemed like the Gentiles, um, the ones that weren't Jews and weren't part of Israel, were actually believing more on Jesus than the actual Jews themselves were believing at that point. Um, but basically, nonetheless, he still came to his own there, to Israel. But because Israel rejected him, rejected him, rejected him, and finally ended up on the cross... Um, he gave them a little bit more time in the, in the start of the book of Acts to come to him. He gave them a little bit more time to, uh, to come to him and, and, uh, and, and to believe on him. And he was ready to come back. You know, when we see uh, Stephen, uh, the first Christian uh, martyr in the scriptures, when he was stoned to death, he, saw, he, opened, he, he looked up and he saw um, Christ standing at the right hand of the Father. You know, Christ was ready to return then. It was, if the Jews had really accepted him, he, he would have come back at that point. But they rejected him then, and after that, then we see the conversion of Saul to uh, Saul of Tarsus to Paul, and then he was the preacher to the Gentiles. So, what happened then was that he, he kind of paused. Christ, uh, God, paused to dealing with Israel at that point, and it became a church age at that point, where the gospel of Christ crucified now. So it's not the gospel of the kingdom we go and preach that he came to the to the Jews to preach. It's the gospel of uh, Christ crucified goes out now into all the world. And it's for everyone, you know, anybody can be saved. You know, for God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth on him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So the gospel has gone out to everyone around the world, and it's going out to everyone around the world 
uh, at the moment. But where we are at the moment in time, in 2021, let's put 2021 that we're actually approaching, where we are is here. We are literally here at the moment, just before the rapture of the church. You know, the rapture is the next prophetic event to happen. Um, according to the word of God. That's the event that we're waiting for at the moment. So a Christian, uh, a born again Christian, a true Christian, a saved Christian, is not waiting to see who the Antichrist is. It's, uh, they're not waiting to you know, bring in the kingdom on earth. They're not waiting to uh, uh, you know, see who's going to be the next uh, president of the United States and all that type of stuff. No, that they are waiting for a sound. They're listening for a sound. They're waiting for a come up hither, their name to be called and so on, the trump of God and everything. And that's what they're waiting for. That's what we are waiting for at the moment. We're waiting for Christ to come back, to come into the clouds and to call us up, to catch us away, to uh, rapture us out of here and to take us out of this, of this uh, earth. And the reason why is because the tribulation period then, when the Antichrist comes in, um, will take place then on the earth. So we're seeing the build-up to that at the moment, aren't we? In 2020, we've seen how the world could be easily locked down uh, through fear of a, you know, whether you believe it or not, there's a virus, for, but through fear of a virus, uh, they've managed to lock the whole world down. And it's not just the governments of the world. The governments are being controlled by higher powers. And those higher powers, ultimately, is Satan. Satan is controlling everything, the world system. It's his at the moment. Um, God has brought it back at the cross, but he hasn't come to claim it yet. Um, he's allowing all these things to kind of uh, 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 map out and so on. Um, but Satan is the one that's controlling everything. So he's controlling everything that's going on. And we've seen how easy it is in 2020 for the whole world to just believe anything, to believe a lie, basically. And to allow their personal liberties to be removed, to allow them to be locked up in their houses, people to, to, to not rebel against it. And, and with vaccines coming out to basically accept it and all that type of stuff. And it really is quite shocking how easy people have allowed themselves to be manipulated, deceived and controlled, really, in 2020. So this seven year tribulation period is, is on its way. And we're getting towards there now. But there'll be no Christians in this period of time here. We'll be raptured out. The whole book of the Bible is all about the rapture before the tribulation. Anybody that tells you that it's mid or post is wrong. And that's it. If they're wrong. Go and study it for yourself and you'll find that the, the, the authorised version, King James Holy Bible, God's inspired and preserved word, is a rapture book before tribulation. Okay, so no Christian is going to be in here. This is going to be dealing with Israel, the Jews and so on, and Gentiles will be caught up in it. Can people still be saved uh, in this time period? Yes, they can, but they'll have to endure to the end. They'll have to endure to the end or they have to get their head chopped off or whatever and not receive the mark of the beast which is coming. And that's what will come. You know, halfway through, you'll get a mark, which may be a black spot or something on the right hand or the forehead. And that mark... If you receive it, you'll be able to buy and sell, but you would have put your allegiance to Satan. Uh, if you don't receive it, then you'll be put to death. It's as simple as that. At the moment, um, in, in 2020, we've had, towards this tail end of 2020, these kind of immunity certificates of so-called virus immunity certificates, like you can't go out of your house. They're talking about you can't go out of your house unless you've got some sort of uh, testing certificate that you've been tested or that you're immune to a vi the virus or something like that. So it's, it's setting the stage, isn't it, for ultimately this mark here that's going to be you can't buy and sell without this mark. So here at the moment, they can't put you to death if you don't uh, have an immunity certificate, things like that. But it's setting the stage until eventually it gets to this mark here where they will put you to death. Um, if you don't accept it, because by accepting this mark, you've accepted your allegiance to Satan. If you don't accept it, then you're saying, no, I'm not accepting it. I'm, I believe God and, and I want to go and be with God. And therefore you'll be put to death, but you'll go and wait and then you'll eventually be with God and so on. And, however, and uh, you know, uh, be, be, in, be in heaven at some point. So that is basically where we are at the moment. That's where we are at the moment. So the rapture is very close. What's the rest of all of this? As I said, the timeline um, study can go on and on and on and on and on. There's so much you can do with it. Uh, there's so many more things you can explain with it. But basically up here, 
after the thousand year reign there's a battle and so on and then all of the people that are in hell and death and hell and so on give up the dead and then you have a um, the great white throne judgment up the top here with for all the unbelievers and all of the believers that came out of the tribulation and the millennial and then you have the judgment here and then after that happens then a new heavens and a new earth is, is made and then the new Jerusalem is, is, is created and so on and then you go into eternity. So there's more that you can do here. This is the second coming of Christ. So when we're raptured up, we're brought up, we're raptured, we're judged at the judgment seat um, of Christ. And that's a Christian judgment based on your works. You know, what works did you do for him? What did you do for him after you were saved? It's not a heaven and hell judgment. It's a, it's a work, a rewards judgment um, there. And then, you know, after he's prepared his bride, which is what we are, we're the bride of Christ, we're the church. After he's prepared his bride, he's got rid of all the bad works and so on, and he's, he's now made a spotless. Then the marriage uh, happens and so on, and then eventually we get the second coming where Christ and us come back to this earth. And at the Battle of Armageddon here, we destroy all of the, uh, whatever it is needs to be destroyed, people, nations and so on. And then we go into 1,000 years of peace. Um, in that millennial kingdom, but there's more that we can be, be more that we can say on that as well. But that's a very quick look at where we are at the moment. So, folks, if you're unsaved and you're watching this, this is how close we are at the moment. You want to be going up. You want to be going up there. You do not want to be going into the tribulation period. That is going to be the worst time in in the history of this earth. As the Bible clearly says, it's going to be absolutely terrifying. It's going to be literally like hell on earth. You do not want to be around during this seven year period. You want to be taken up with the Christians at the rapture um, when Christ comes back for us. So hopefully that's given you a quick idea. If you've got any questions, please go on to um, knowthetruth.uk website, knowthetruth.uk and uh, you can... Uh, um, contact me there in the contact form and I'm happy to answer any questions for you. So there you have it. There's a, a very quick uh, brief overview of where we are at the moment in January 2021. Now I haven't deliberately, I haven't put scripture verses on there and things like that. I just wanted to keep it very simple for the moment. But if you do have any questions, if you do want to know scripture verses and so on, then keep an eye on the uh, website, Know the Truth, UK and I'll put a blog post on there with scripture verses and so on on there but also if you have any specific questions don't forget to use the contact form as well uh, where you can reach out to me with absolutely any question you want to about the bible about what's happening in the world and so on and uh, I will get the answer for you if I know it myself I'll obviously share it if not then I'll find the answer for you um, or put you in touch with somebody who would have that answer as well but uh, really folks you know if you're not saved you need to get saved how do you get saved? Simply believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, that he died for you, for your sins, was buried and rose again the third day. And, uh, you know, by him taking your penalty on the cross, he's paid for all of your sins. All of your sins have already been paid for. All you have to do is to accept the free gift of salvation that he offers to everyone. Doesn't matter who you are, doesn't matter what your background is, what you've done in the past or how much sin you think you've done and stuff like that. You know, he is ready and waiting to save everyone and anyone who comes to him. So believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, you know, just uh, say to him today in the best way you know how, God, you know, I believe that what Jesus Christ did for me on the cross, I believe he did that for me. I accept him as the payment uh, for my sins. I accept what he did on the cross. I don't understand it all, but I accept and I believe <clears throat> that that's what happened on the cross of Calvary. And uh, I want to be saved. Please, Lord, save me. And he will save you. He will save you. So, folks, that's what you need to do if you don't want to go into this tribulation period, uh, which is going to be an absolutely hellish time on this earth. And you do not want to be going into it. And we are so close to the rapture of the church at the moment. There really isn't a lot of time left. So you really must get right with the Lord today. So just believe on him. Believe on his word. Believe on what he did for you. And you will be saved. But I'll see you again in another video. Take care. Bye bye. Thank you.